This past year provided a truly magical experience in this winter wonderland. All seasons here are beautiful, but winter is when we have the greatest reliance on our system. Our microhydro ran flawlessly with little maintenance and provided us with abundant power and heat all winter. There were still a few problems that needed occasional attention. A slight drop in power was apparent, and we discovered a large tree had been blown down upon our main support cable for the penstock bridge. This lifted the entire span of the bridge cable several inches and caused a visible arch in the level of the pipeline. This also pulled slightly upon the length of the pipeline and caused a small leak to develop at one of the couplings. Removing the tree from the cable permitted easy refitting of the coupling. This tree falling added stretching in the cable and changed the shape of the pipeline span. The main cable, stringer cables, and turnbuckles needed some adjustment of lengths. To accomplish this, our best practice was to drain the pipeline of water to remove the weight of the water in the penstock. This made adjustment of the main cable turnbuckle and others much easier and once refilled the penstock was level again. Another problem we encountered was small leaks around the sides of our intake dam. This we discovered was largely being caused by water getting under the upper end of the rubber liner. Adjusting the placement of rocks in this area went a long way to resolving this issue and our dam leaks were sealed. In late June of this year, our curiosity brought us to attend the Hydrovision event in Denver, Colorado. While there, we were able to see displays showing the history of hydropower, and much of it was quite familiar, like this Pelton runner, similar to what our turbine utilizes. But for the most part, the conference is about large-scale industrial hydropower. There was a great variety of water control devices utilized in major hydropower projects around the world. On display were everything from large flow valves used in pipe penstocks to massive sluice gates used for dam overflow to internal ultrasonic flow measuring systems. There were remote robots used for underwater inspection of dams and intakes which lessen the risk to underwater divers and personnel in the management of large hydropower facilities. There were mechanical governors for control of water flow and several different designs of both impulse and reactive turbines. And this unit, a 3D printed design, which was assembled from individually printed components. But this is what I really came looking for. It is an engineered wedge wire coanda screen intake, which is modular in its design, made by Elgin. Fortunately, I was able to work out a deal to acquire the floor model and use it to replace my home built screen. There is a link here to a separate video to show the installation of this unit on my system. It is engineered to filter about 560 gallons per minute and has greatly reduced any need for cleaning or maintaining the intake in all seasons. Many viewers have questioned why we don't build a permanent intake for the creek diversion. The simple answer is that the entire hillside is being eroded by the creek each year and the debris is falling into our intake area at the edge of our property. With successive spring flows each year, this area continues to change. With the waters rising this year, it was time to remove the diversion intake from the creek. It really isn't that much in the way of effort to remove the intake pipe and the flexible poly pipe, which feeds water to the meadow. Doing this ensures that the waters from high country springtime snowmelt in May and June each year will not damage or destroy our access to divert water. 
Our flexible diversion pipe is safe on the shoreline instead of coursing up through the creek bed to reach the intake point required to acquire adequate fall for water to reach the meadow. It is clear that the force of even this reduced runoff is more than sufficient in its tons of raging water pressure to destroy most anything we would attempt to build permanently in this area. With the flexible diversion pipe disassembled, there is no water from the creek reaching the meadow at this spring time of year. But this isn't really a problem as there is adequate water running naturally through the meadow from a lake runoff source, which provides more than enough power for our needs at a reduced flow setting. Once early July arrives and the runoff subsides, we see our pipe has survived and we can survey what changes have taken place in our intake area at the edge of the property. This year the erosion was less than prior years, but still quite evident. This year we are installing a design of intake recommended by one of our viewers, and there is a link below which suggested the design. It is constructed from an existing polydrum and spare parts we had laying around. It has screened entry holes all around the bottom to let the water into the tank and a manifold to reduce the potential of vortices. Once we reconfigured the flexible pipeline on the creek bed in the best selected course to maintain rough grade to the intake pool, we installed the intake tank so the intake manifold will always be below the level of the water in the tank. This ensures there will be no air entering or creating an airlock within the flexible pipe. The resulting water we now consistently transport to the meadow is greater than we've ever had. And this, in addition to the better intake screen we've installed, should create the opportunity to potentially add a second jet to our turbine and increase our power in the future. But that's another project and another day. That about wraps up the details we have to show on this system. Our next video will be an overview of this whole series on our system for those that have less interest in the details. Please like, thumbs up, favorite, and subscribe for future videos.